At this point in time, Variant Edition Comics in Edmonton, Canada has no credibility with me whatsoever. They keep jumping from story to story, but I think we've hammered down what some key facts are. The first thing is that a window was broken. It happens to be the smallest window and the least amount of property damage you could have of all time. But a window was still broken. That's not, it's not good. You know, they're a small business. I don't, I don't appreciate that. The second thing is no comics were stolen. No statues were stolen. No Magic the Gathering cards were stolen. Which if I were, an, if I were a horrible human being and I was a thief, I would be stealing all the fucking Magic the Gathering boxes and just, oh man, I should be cracking those open. But no, nothing was stolen. No cash was stolen. The cash was in a safe, as it should be for a small business. The register was open, uh, and there were coins in the register. Now, I used to work retail a long time ago when I was a teenager because I'm not a lazy millennial, but <laughs> I'm joking. But I used to work in retail, and I used to, when I closed up the stores, we did leave the registers open, and the, we actually had the coins in the register. The reason they did that was because there was never more than $20 in coins. They're claiming $400 worth of coins were taken. All right, 400, let me tell you, we coming from the bank with getting, making change and getting the coins in those tubes, it's fucking heavy. Even $30 worth of coins is pretty heavy, all right? $400 worth of coins must be like 50 pounds. I didn't, I didn't look it up because fuck that, but it's, it's heavy. So a crackhead came in and stole $400 worth of coins. I don't think that's actually what happened. I think they stole about $15 worth of with their coins. But then they decide to go on Twitter sorry, on their Facebook, and post this. I'm going to read this verbatim. I'm going to have it up in the, uh, in the video so you can look, but this is it. An update due to recent events. A man arrived at the store today who frequented us at our old location. All right, former customer. Parties are known to each other. Brandon was at a business district meeting and Danica approached him. Now, this line is very interesting. I'm going to tell you why. This line is interesting for one reason, because... They are giving a reason why the, it's a male-female. They're giving the reason why the male wasn't there to make the approach. Now, they're doing this to stave off any, like, oh, well, why did you, why did you approach him? First of all, because she's a strong, independent woman. They don't need no man, so check your fucking privilege, cis lord. But second of all, they're doing it for plausible deniability. This is why she went over to him, because she was all alone in the store. Ah, she was all alone in the store. So, obviously, she felt in danger. Harassment! If this actually happened. And Danica approached him, as from a distance he appeared to be a strange man videotaping the store. All right, he's an autist. Upon approach, he stated he was taping for his YouTube show and started asking repeatedly why we tweeted in the first place about not stocking the book. That's, I don't believe this. I really don't believe this. I need to know what his YouTube show is so I can go and just fucking shit all over his life. He kept insisting that he was our demographic. This is an interesting paragraph. He kept insisting he was our demographic and that we don't know our customers at all. So they're inserting talking points. They're inserting the talking points from Zach into this guy's speech, okay? Obviously, I don't believe this happened. As she explained our stance, he just continued to ask why we tweeted in the first place and that he was our demographic. They always seem to misunderstand this argument. It's not the fact that you're, you're not selling the book. You could not sell the book. Nobody really gives a shit. We're going to find the book anyway. Who cares? The fact of the matter is, though, that you are complicitly involved in back-channel negotiations with other comic book pros and other comic book stores in order to specifically not sell the book. It's not the fact that you actually aren't selling it. It's the, it's the reasons behind why. It's the fact that you guys are being sneaky about it. That's what really, I think, bothers us the most. You all think you're so fucking sneaky about everything you fucking do, not realizing it's the goddamn internet and everything's going to come out. Is this your first fucking month in the internet? Come on. Anyway. This man, who we have, according to him, saw once in the store since we moved at the end of August in 2016. A note, we don't recall seeing him in the store, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not true. All right, plausible deniability. The next part gets a little rough. It doesn't get a little rough. Let me tell you, it does not get a little rough. Eventually, he packed up his camera, and as he got... So he had a fucking... He had an actual camera? Was it an actual camera, or was it his phone? This makes it seem like he had an actual... What's an autist doing with an actual camera? Eventually, he packed up his camera, and as he got into his car, he called Danica and asked Oh, yeah. Why do you wait until you get into the car? Danica replied with, thank you. I know I am a warrior. All right, all right, all right. This is the, I don't believe this happened, and this is the main reason. They come off looking so good. When shit like this actually occurs, it, I'm telling you, it devolves into just two people just autistically screeching at each other, no matter what your main argument was. 
To which you replied, you're not a warrior, you're a pissant. I wonder, why did pissant? Do people still say that? Do you say peasant and they, they fucked it up? She banned him from the store. <laughs> did she just like wave, banned! You have been banned from our store. And he then called her a dumb bitch and then drove away. I believe that happened. <laughs> Rest assured, this man is not our demographic. All right. Obviously, because you made him up. <laughs> when people ask why we spoke up, interactions like this make those reasons clear. We provided our stance, and even in a city where there's a myriad of other choices, for some reason, one store that doesn't cater to the whims of those who diminish this medium, all right, and the kind of wonderful people who wish to experience stories that they can see themselves in, who don't buy the fucking books, by the way, is grounds for endless harassment. I don't believe this happened. I legitimately don't believe this happened. We remain, our policy remains, comics for everyone, not comics for some. Not actually, comics for everyone, it's obviously not comics for everyone. It's, it's literally only comics for some. You're literally banning a book for political reasons, and you want to claim that your banning of the book is just, and that you're still open and inclusive. You're not. You're not. What the fuck? How you, you're literally saying, this is the equivalent of saying that... All animals are created equal, but some are more equal than others. This is literally what you're doing. Points for who gets the reference. It's very fucking obvious reference if you went to fucking high school. Thank you, Brandon and Danica. This is obviously not... This, this, is, this is another... I, the more I hear about variant edition, the less I actually think something happened. Like, this is an issue. They also claimed on their Twitter that they called the police because they, and they filed a report with the police. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not autistic, so I'm not going to go around and like start looking for police reports and shit. I don't give a fuck. I, none of you should really care that much either. But I really don't, I don't believe them. I really don't believe them. And it, like, as of last night, I believe a crackhead broke into their store. But now, there's too many coincidences. There's entire, this sounds like a, a second grader is writing a story about being, about like being bullied. That's what this sounds like. But they also, if you notice, they also have to make their, themselves seem really cool. And so they stand up to the bully and they have uh, snappy comebacks for everything the bully says. I don't believe it. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Am I off base? Uh, like, share, and subscribe. I don't know. Uh, varying edition comics. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Don't fucking sell a book. Who gives a shit? Honestly. At the end of the day, who fucking cares? We're going to get the book anyway. People who want the book are going to find it. It doesn't matter. Like, share, subscribe. You follow me at Trajan Channel. I'll catch you guys later. I promise I have a pull list video coming, actually.